Alrighty, guys. Now we have Colorado's only resident kite species. And really what I like to tell folks is this is truly a tropical South American bird that just happens to come to Colorado and other uh, central, southern, east coast states to breed from May to September. Uh, we have five species of kites in the United States. They're all in different genera. Um, his closest relative is actually the Plumbeus kite, which is Central and South America. The Mississippi kite historically has been described as a Southern Central Great Plains bird, but this is actually one of the birds that seems to have benefited from a warming climate. They are now breeding as far north as Ohio and even New Hampshire. And scientists are discovering that the East Coast kites that live in more heavily forested area have a much different social structure than the ones we get out here in the Great Plains in Colorado. So um, this little guy is five years old Mississippi kites do not have as much size dimorphism as, um, say, the falcons and the occipiters do. Their weights range from about seven and a half to nine and a half ounces. We are fairly certain this is a male. He came to us through our colleagues at the Pueblo Raptor Center, and we fight to keep him under 10 ounces. He is a little bit of uh, a pig. Um, Mississippi kites are primarily insectivorous though they will catch bats and any songbird that comes, you know, kind of cross their flight path. But they too, like uh, red-shouldered hawks and broadwing hawks, also will take nestling songbirds. Here in Colorado, they are primarily found out east, particularly places like Greeley, Sterling, Lamar, and Pueblo. And um, in Kansas as well, these guys really like to roost and nest communally. Oh, what was that all about? They got to see some long wings there, everybody. These guys like to roost and nest communally, so cottonwood trees and poplar trees that ring city parks and ring golf courses are often very common places to find a couple dozen kite nests scattered among several trees. There's definitely safety in number. Uh, the problem with that is that they have a reputation for becoming extremely territorial when younger in the nest and they will dive bomb and threaten park goers and especially uh, golfers. Um, so this guy's eye color as a five-year-old really should be a deep garnet, deep uh, red color, but he from what we can determine, has been in human care since he was maybe only a week old. This is one of the few birds we care for at Raptor Education Foundation that actually came from Colorado. He was found in Lamar in the summer of 2015. Must have gotten blown out of the nest by one of those, you know, June tornado or borderline, you know, severe weather events that we have here in the summer. He was bounced around illegally to a couple of families before he showed up on the doorstep in September of a raptor biologist and, you know, falconer who realized exactly what she had and realized that he was completely imprinted to human uh, care. He does not know he's a kite. He barely even knows how to fly. He is somewhat afraid of it. He missed that very critical um, wiring uh, when they learn how to take wing. And from what she could determine, uh, the bird was the size of a golf ball, just a nestling when it was found. So he was taken to the Pueblo Raptor and Nature Center who evaluated him because a lot of times when little nestling raptors are raised by people and not licensed people that may not know what they're doing, they're fed a very um, def uh, diet deficient in calcium and not what they need to get nutrition wise. But his bones are fine, fortunately, but there's no way obviously he could go back to the wild. As you can see, they have very, very long, long wings. And it's hard to see in this lighting, but when you take a wild kite that has the proper varied diet of cicadas and dragonflies and grasshoppers, the base of the primaries has this subtle deep red to it. And if you look at a good field guide, you'll be able to see it. He just has not gotten a lot of that red, 
We do feed him mostly mice, but we also feed him a diet of grasshoppers in the summer when we can catch them and waxworms. And I happen to have one here. He does love his worms. And yes, we feed him wax worms, not mealworms, because wax worms have a higher moisture and fat content. Here in cold, dry Colorado, keeping a tropical bird healthy means we have to keep him warm and we have to keep him moist. So he has his own little sort of Caribbean corner in our barn. He has um, sort of an off sequence molt. He tends to molt early or late, depending on your perspective, relative to our other birds. They are also very social birds too, so he is in a high traffic area where he can see both other birds and humans to get the socialization that they require. Because these kites are so social, they have an interesting family structure as well. Um, sibling competition for resources and food from the parents is very common, but nestling Mississippi kites will preen each other and together they will even somewhat tidy up the nest. And in addition, uh, juveniles from the previous year that are now one year old will often return with their parents or find another substitute family, so to speak, and will help guard the nest, brood eggs, uh, or brood young and incubate eggs and sort of serve as nest helpers. But again, this is just in the West, uh, Western US populations. This sort of communal behavior hasn't really been observed in the East Coast.